So it's quite excellent. So um, on the topic of plague graves, plague graves, plague graves, plague graves. So I've been keeping an eye on these things and obviously speaking about a lot more on the main podcast and stuff. And um, and obviously most of you are aware what plague graves are, but essentially it was a catch-all sort of way to uh, categorize any sort of party that was happening during the COVID lockdowns across the world. Um, the idea, the basic premise behind it was that some of the more affluent, well-off DJs in the scene were going out of their way to perform these shows that were not necessarily the most legal things in the world. Um, if they were legal, then it might not have been the most ethical things in the world concerning the um, transmission of the virus and how it tends to kind of thrive in areas where people are in close proximity, dancing, shouting, whatever it may be, which is, you know, what you may deem as to be a, um, a rave of some sort. And then, of course, it got to a point where, you know, accounts were set up such as Business Techno, which essentially highlighted and pinpointed certain people who are some of the worst offenders. And I think in the beginning, especially when we were all indoors and we didn't have any prospect or idea of going back outdoors again, it was just really, I guess, in some sense, what Tori Lenz was speaking about with his complaints for the DSP, sort of like silencing him and not promoting his music. It just felt unfair, right? It felt unfair that as a kind of global community of electronic music fans that we were somehow denied the ability to rave but then other people were permitted to do so because they had the money and the finances to do so and sometimes you're led to believe that you know electronic music club nights and whatever it may be is somehow democratic right as long as you have the funds as long as you're able to attend anyone can go there is no delineation between the rich and the poor for the most part on the dance floor everyone's sort of united under this umbrella of you know we're here for the music now obviously that's not the whole story things change different areas different things vip clubs exist tables all this sort of stuff changes the narrative but in general most of these people that you see on these flyers do you know kind of occupy this weird thing which is kind of new you don't really see it often maybe yeah i think so where they sort of like occupy they're able to kind of do things on the quote-unquote underground sort of which is not really underground but they're also able to kind of exist in this really big glitzy massive tomorrowland stage sort of level really strange so that kind of makes it difficult in order to judge them critically because you somehow look at them like as if somebody that should know better but then maybe they are so far gone in terms of like how big they are as an artist that they now become a brand and a machine that doesn't necessarily um uh ascribe to the ideas of doing it for the culture or doing it for the scene or saving the scene or this sort of crappy you know resident advisor you know um cheesy things to put out there so that was basically where everyone was but then the more i started to think about it especially considering how different countries have dealt with covid really poorly um the lack of support for people that were ex that kind of make their living in the creative arts the lack of support for people that live and work within a nightlife economy and within hospitality in general it just made me think that maybe we should be a bit resistant and kind of hold our horses in terms of tattle tailing or tattle tailing, whatever that word is, right? On people and calling people out for going to perform when essentially, especially even some of even some of the highest paid ones that we think of, they're mostly doing it because they don't have any other way of making money right most of these people i'd assume 80 percent of them there's probably 20 percent are just you know are narcissistic and need to be in front of people they need to be doing the, doing the flipping jesus post in front of somebody if they're not playing they don't get any validation if they don't get validation there's no point in them existing i'm sure they exist but for the most part most people are doing it because they, have, they need to put food on the table they need to put a roof over their head they need to provide for their children they need to pay the bills whatever it may be doing that's why they're doing it and their governments are not giving them any other option or solution that kind of provides them with a chance to not go and travel many many miles across the world to go and play in front of people they're not providing with now if we were in a situation where these countries that where these place people are from were providing some support for them in the creative industries and giving them an option where they could possibly stay home and you know do whatever needs to be done then fair enough but even with that being said i just don't really think that i'm okay with telling somebody how they should and shouldn't go about earning money or how they should or shouldn't go about trying to survive and just live to fight another day i really don't and i think a lot of the arguments a lot of the debate around this plague rave business tension thing you mostly comes around in mics from my point of view from what i'm seeing it it feels like it's more so a jealousy thing for me it was more so a feeling left out it just felt annoying to see videos of people playing around the world 
you know, people jumping up and down and I can't do it, right? It's just like, why the fuck is this happening? This is completely unfair. But for the people that I feel like that are really involved and who kind of have an axe to grind with business techno people in general, don't think they should exist, don't think they should be, you know, breathing and have a place in the scene, they you they definitely use this as an opportunity to get these people the fuck out of here. And I just don't think it's fair. I think you can say what you want about the artistry. Again, I'm no fan of the Amelia lenses. I'm no fan of the Charlotte DeWitts. I'm no fan of the Peggy Goose, right? Yeah, I mean, the music is trash for me. I could probably think of far better things I could do with my spare time. But I'm also not naive enough to think that other people ha will have or are willing to have the same taste in music that I have. I think everyone has their place. Everyone has their part to play within the global, you know, or you know, the, the, the global scene. Everyone has their place. Everyone has their role to play. And if some people prefer that kind of music, then fair enough. I also don't believe this idea behind, oh, they, are a, they, they should serve as a gateway to get people more interested in other music. No, I think it should be perfectly fine if somebody's okay with just listening to flipping bleeps and air horns and smoke machine filled arenas in Tomorrowland. If that's what they want and that's what they like, let them enjoy what they want to enjoy. I think this idea of policing what people do with their time and how they earn their money and also policing how people enjoy their music or who they enjoy is really odd. It's really odd. And to me, it just screams of jealousy that because you can't do it yourself. Because I think the conversation around playgrounds will be far different if it first started being a thing where the people getting booked were the ones that were sort of like in the middle to lower tiers who are the ones who are kind of you know maybe a supporting headliner whatever it may be if those DJs were the ones that were getting the spots first I think the conversation would be far different but because as soon as things went into lockdown the people that you saw on the road were the Adam Bayers the Nina Kravises the Lucianos those are the people you saw playing first of all right it really rubbed people up the wrong way because it basically exposed the unfairness um of the scene in general right with the fact that the the more you have the more you get um with the fact that this idea that we had oh the, because if we go lockdown it's going to promote people to basically go out there and you know get involved in their local scene and promote their local artists no if anything it just heightened the it just kind of exasperated or widened or exposed magnified the unfairness of the scene in general what it showed you was that even in the wake of or in the midst of a lockdown when you had reduced capacities when people were limited in their movements what did promoters do instead of taking a chance on local acts they went and got the person that they could they knew point blank could ensure that they sell a certain amount of tickets and that they cover themselves at the bar and all that good, good stuff and it just exposed the you know unfairness of the scene in general and that's what basically done and i think if that was flipped if the lower to middle tier people were the ones getting the guest spots before people would be a lot more would be a lot less bothered as they are now but i think